GT wings or drift wings or big gay wings. Not keen on that one, don't like that too much. Um, but yeah, big daft spoilers or wings on MX-5s. I'm not really keen on how they look. I think in most cases they look a bit daft. I think my own car looks very daft. Um, but it's a track car, it's all about function rather than form. Um, so I fitted one. Uh, I'd done quite a lot of reading, uh, done lots of research, at least the level that I could, and it looked like there were a bunch of people getting a really positive effect from having a rear wing on an MX-5. So uh, it's pretty much impossible to make an exact science, in fact it is impossible to make an exact science of aerodynamics on an MX-5 when you're just a normal track goer. So it's all a case of taking a little bit of information from whatever sources you can find that you believe are reliable. Uh, so you've got the science aspect, what you know, the, the physics, what what it's actually doing. Then you've got anecdotal information. So you know, in in each example where you've seen someone get a benefit from it on track, what have they done? What sort of wing have they used? How have they mounted it? Um, and then you've got to just try it yourself at some point. So um, for me, at least, the the most important thing would be performance testing it so I know that at least in my application it's absolutely functional um, otherwise there's no point having it. Uh, so um, I couldn't afford to go out and buy the wing that I wanted. Uh, at the time I think had I been able to go out and buy something new I probably would have bought an APR, I think it's a GTC 200 or 300, they look, they look great. Um, I know Toby's got one on his MX-5, which incidentally is one of the best looking MX-5s that I've ever seen, uh, even with the, all of the uh, the big wing and everything. Uh, yeah, I think that looks great, Toby. Uh, but yeah, I think that's probably the wing I would have gone for if I'd, if I'd been able to justify the expense of you know, £800 or whatever it would be for, for a rear wing. Uh, I couldn't, so... I decided to look for a second-hand wing from a company that I thought produced something functional and that was well-developed. I also looked at wings from, from race cars, by that I mean genuine race cars, so Ginettas and upwards basically, so anything that's got a proper, properly developed motorsport wing, I figured I could take that and uh, bolt it to the back of an MX-5 and at least see if it worked. Um, so I scoured eBay and Gumtree and forums and stuff like that, and um, and eventually I stumbled across a what was in fact a Lola GT wing, um, and I didn't pay much for it. I thought, cool, this is big. It's made by Lola. It's going to be super functional. Um, I went and picked it up, and it's massive. It would have looked absolutely ridiculous on an MX-5. So I've got that in the shed for whatever project may arise in the future, but it's just way too big for an MX-5. Um, so I went back to all the various outlets and uh, eventually stumbled across a, a Voltex wing, which um, for me is pretty much the pinnacle. Uh, when it comes to those sorts of things. Uh, it's a 3D design uh, and it's quite a narrow wing. I think it's 14, 1400 mil, something like that. So it's quite narrow, suits the MX-5 quite well. It's not got a stupid amount of power, not got that much weight, so it suits the car fairly well. And it was uh, it was very cheap as well. It was I think it was 215 pounds, so a huge huge saving on what would be over a thousand pounds by the time you got it to the UK as new. So got a superb piece of kit there for for not a crazy amount of money. In terms of mounting, I just put it as far back on the on the boot lid as I could. Uh, nothing more to it than that. Figured the air's 
cleanest at the rearmost part. It's got some flat mounting feet on it. So I just positioned them as far to the back as I could do. Uh, and that was as much science that went into the, uh, the, the placement of the wing. Okay, so the all important performance testing. Uh, I tested it at Cadwell Park on my uh, S2000 powered MX-5 and did a session without the wing first and a session with the wing afterwards. Uh, everything, all the other conditions were identical. Um, and there was an enormous shift in the balance of the car uh, at mid to high speeds. So, at least in my application, it's, it's definitely doing something. Um, the car was quite loose at the rear without the wing, it was set up as such, so mechanically um, quite oversteery in its balance. Um, and with the wing, it, it shifted to be, retained that oversteery balance at low speeds, but mid speed, and then in particular high speed, there was a definite understeer tendency. Um, so very, very effective. It radically changed the car and the balance of the car, much more so than, than, than I anticipated. It didn't make it drastically faster. Um, there's, there was only ever so much front end grip and that of course didn't increase with the with the wing on the back so it, in fact it may even have reduced the front grip by having some sort of cantilever effect on it um, so the the actual lap times i don't think they really changed much certainly apex speeds i don't think they changed corner exit speeds not really changed much um, the corner entry speeds at cadwell were were somewhat higher with the rear wing purely because I could commit to them. Uh, if you know Cadwell or in the video you'll be able to see it's quite hairy in places um, and you just don't want the car to swap ends on you <laughs> at those sorts of speeds. I'm not equipped with the skill to collect up those sorts of slides so for me it just allowed me to commit more to the corners, carry a little bit more speed on the way in, brake a little bit later um, and of course that would that would show in the lap time they'd be slightly quicker but it's not a step change the fitment of the wing doesn't put you seconds faster um, purely because it, you've only increased rear grip you've perhaps very slightly decreased front grip so overall you've you've not improved the speed at which you can take the corner so here's a video of the car before the wing went on you'll see that it's it's pretty loose at the rear uh, there's lots of oversteery moments both at low and, and higher speed as well um, and I was getting used to the setup so it was um, it wasn't some I'm not used to driving the car like that um, and so for me it was it was a learning curve um, but you can see that the balance of the car is is toward oversteer it's it's quite twitchy
onto the car with the wing, fitted the wing straight afterwards and went back out on track. And as you'll see from the video, it's, it's quite a different car. Um, at low speeds, you can still see there's that tendency towards oversteer. Um, the mechanical balance of the car hasn't changed. Uh, but at high speeds, the rear is planted, um, particularly through uh, coppice, the fast left-hander that goes uphill. You can see that the rear end is just planted with the wing, whereas before, quite frequently, it would jink out. It would need a bit of correction going through there, which is, which is fairly hairy, um, given that you're travelling at, I don't know, 90 mile an hour or something on quite a narrow track. Hopefully here you'll also see that, that I can be a little bit more committed with it. Uh, almost take liberties with it knowing that that rear end is stuck. Break a little bit late to carry a bit more speed into the corners. Um, so hopefully the video will demonstrate well the change in balance from not having the wing and the oversteer to, to having the wing and, and more of an understeer at, at mid to high speeds. when you add a rear wing and put this great big thing in the airflow behind the car is that you almost always increase the drag. It makes perfect sense. You're putting something in the way of the air, you're stopping the air, changing the direction of the air. It's got to be causing drag. Um, so there's, there's normally a, a terminal speed penalty. So you add speed around the corners, um, but the straight line performance normally suffers. Um, extremely happily in my situation, um, with the wing I've used and the position that it's mounted on the MX-5 with the hardtop, uh, it's not changed the terminal speed at all. Um, I'll run a little video so you can see a direct comparison. I've got two corner exit speeds, the same on Park Straight, or sorry, out of Charlie's 2. Um, corner exit speeds are the same, everything else is the same, but the terminal speeds are also the same. One's without the wing, one's with the wing. So it, it's pretty conclusive proof that on my car, the wing isn't actually increasing drag, uh, which is pretty remarkable and uh, a huge slice of luck, I would say, because in most examples, I think you probably have lower terminal speeds. In fact, what you'll probably be able to see in the video with the wing is that the terminal speed, I think, is one mile an hour faster. Um, I think it creeps up to that terminal speed just as the, as the video without the wing is also at its terminal speed. So I think minutely, I mean, we'll put that down to 
to error you know there's the, most likely that that's just one mile an hour either side can be put down to error but it it shows pretty well that there really isn't any drag penalty from fitting the wing on the car um, and I guess I guess that's probably because it, it clears up the air flower coming over the roof on an MX-5 um, so there's there's the added drag of just having something physically there but I'm, I think the aerodynamics of the MX-5 is so poor that having that wing there in the position that it is by by chance has just cleaned up the airflow a bit so it's it's maintained the the level of drag 